two, three, four, five on the Scotty report, and he's getting blitzed. He's getting doubled. But with Kaminga coming back Thursday, he's missed four straight games with tendonitis in his knee. Is there any cause for concern that Kaminga coming back can take away the rhythm of Wiggins, can take away some of the ball movement? Because I got a few texts last night I knew it was going to happen. BPA, we flushed him the other day. I got a text from my guy, Matt Payne. Shout out to Big B out there. He's like, man, the ball's moving better without Kaminga. And I'm like, they still get over 30 assists with Kaminga in the lineup. And I believe they need Kaminga. The thing about Kaminga, he's averaging nearly 20 points a game in the month of March. He's played some, the best basketball of his young career. But is there any cause of concern? Because this is what we've seen all season. One guy comes back, one guy comes out. One guy comes back, one guy is out of the rotation. Whether it's Moody, whether it's CJD, whether it's Clavon Looney, whether it's Dario Sarge, whoever. But is there any cause of concern that Kaminga's presence could maybe take away shots from Wiggins or take away shots from Clay? It's a good to me. It's a good problem to have. Welcome me, Kaminga, back. But now we look at the starting lineup, and I know because like I'm at the point, Chesky. I don't care who starts. I don't care. I, I just want to win basketball games. But I know there's going to be people watching Kaminga Thursday saying. What's going to happen when he does come back? Well, there, I would be lying to you if I didn't say a small part of me isn't intrigued by what it looks like. And it's fair to question it. Like, you know, with Kaminga going out, it coincides with Wiggins playing a little better. I think there's something to be said about being uh, higher on the pecking order in terms of the, the you know, what, what option you are, you know, who you're playing alongside of. <sighs> Do I think they can play together? Yes, absolutely. I think they can play together. Mm. Have we seen the two of them simultaneously play two or three weeks of good ball alongside each other? That is the biggest question. Not can they have a one-off game or even two games in a row. Like, Because what, we, what we're asking right now is like, you, you see them win that game last night. Like, right. All right, is that sustainable? Like, can, can they ride that into a, a two-play-in game scenario and mm. then into the first round? Like, that's really, like, one of the final questions that I have on this team. Like, how sustainable is this defensive effort? I do believe they need him defensively, uh, John and Kaminga. I do believe they need his athleticism. Um, I think we make way too much of his decision-making. I think his decision-making has been way better. If you just watch, he's he's much more willing passer. He's making the skip pass or the extra pass, which leads to the assist. He does a lot of good things. Um. I just think that he's an easy scapegoat, and I can I see yeah, where you're going I, I, with this, yeah, and know, I think it's it's BPA I think you're right. alluded to it, and that BPA wasn't the first guy I heard say that. I was, you know, I'm looking at my Instagram messages, I look at all my DMs, and I'm I'm looking at the Twitter comments, and even though I don't tweet as much, I still I'm still keeping an eye on some of you guys uh, to make sure yeah, that you're in the DMs to say hi. <laughs> some of you guys are being respectful in the DMs, like Brianna, she was very respectful in the DMs. Shout out to Brianna out there. Yeah, in I know people. Uh, I wonder how she feels about this Warriors team. Um, 888-957-9570. She's a Doobie Award winner. We gotta, you know, where's, by the way, our Doobie Award winner, Ernie Chavez, the streets are telling me that he's been double dipping a little bit. What do you mean? Say it ain't so, Ernie Chavez. Oh, my God. What do you, what do you mean? He's been going in other chats. Just, just, the streets are talking. Going in other chats. I mean, the streets this are talking. Is... People say, how can you make Ernie Chavez a YouTuber of the year when he's YouTubing everywhere? So are you stripping him of that title? No, no. He still wins the 2023 YouTuber of the year award. But it's his candidacy, it, going back to back, <sighs> not it's sure he's going to be able to defend that championship. Second place finisher. I'm optimistic about that. Yeah, I got a lot of love for you, too, as you know. Let me just say, as long as I'm on this show, that guy ain't winning no doobie award. Hi, how are you? <laughs> He ain't winning a Doobie Award. But no, seriously, in Dub Nation, like, it, as well as everything that's going of the right year. now. Troll of the Year. Yeah, that's, that's a good one for him. Him and Tyler Miller. I'm not um, doing anything crazy. But is there a concern <laughs> that Kamiga, like, is he even going to come back and start? You know, just for a second. Just just one second. Just grant me this. What if we found out that, like, he was the head of Google or something? Like, wouldn't that be hilarious if BPA was like, you know what? He's actually the mayor of San Jose. Yeah, I know, I know he's not, but I'm just saying, like, wouldn't that be I hilarious? Hope, I hope it stays a mystery because I never want to meet, like, you don't want to meet your heroes or anything. That's how I feel with Brian <laughs> Meet your heroes. He's your hero? <laughs> It says a lot about Spadoni, man. You know, Kenny the Snake scared. Stabler and Brian in Palo Alto. I mean, the game plan by a lot of the jukebox. Let's go. Oh, my God. I, keep it oh real. Oh, my God. You guys have tried to look him up. You guys have tried to find him. I know you guys have. We may or may not have caller ID here. 
We do. <laughs> no, we don't. That's what, a lie. What job would be the best for him to have for for it to just make like chef's kiss? Like, what would he have to be? Like, I do think like like high power ranking tech official for Apple or something. Executive for Apple. Like, wouldn't that be amazing? He's an Uber driver. An Uber. Over oh, driving for the Giants. Oh my gosh. It does kind of explain why he's always listening to Ray. He probably isn't. It, it's nothing wrong with being an Uber driver. You gotta get your money, man. <laughs> BPA overnight dancer? Nah. <laughs> he's an overnight dancer. That's that's I'm mean. optimistic. What is the show? What is the show at the uh hey, the you too, They you say know. he's an IRS <laughs> agent. That <laughs> is a great call. Chippendales? No. <laughs> it was, I think it was uh, well, they, they, we were at the Excalibur for the Super Bowl. They always have that show there. The last time I said the Excalibur back in 2013, they had the same show. Was it Down Under or something? I don't know. I, oh, what is that? The uh, Thunder Down Under? Thunder Down Under. Okay, okay, see. It's just saying BPA. <laughs> anyway. Don't give me false equivalencies. <laughs> no, <laughs> but, you know, if what if... He's what, a kindergarten teacher. What if Kaminga... <laughs> Uh, what if Kaminga? Wouldn't that be hilarious? You're taking Baby Chesta to, to school one day, and it's like, "Hi, I'm your new teacher, Brian." Oh my God, I pull out the class so damn fast. I pull her out the class. Hi, so how fast. are you? Shout out to Kyle Kelly for that uh, assist. I, I stole that from Kyle Kelly. Uh, by the, way, the whole thunder down under. Um, that is hilarious. If, if Baby Chaz walked into a classroom with BP, hell, if BPA was you teaching, hear the voice first because you don't know what he looks like. Yeah, yeah, you hear the voice. That's what you hear. Yeah. If it was BPA, we know what Tyler Miller looks like. Give me like, like a high. Give me a Brian like, Bell. That's a high. Like, I want my kid. How are you? I want my kid. How are you? Welcome to kindergarten. Right. I want my kid nowhere around uh, Tyler Miller. I don't mind SF Bay Trevor. SF Bay He's Trevor got like a great. PowerPoint presentation on why Draymond's got nothing left. Exactly. One of my favorite well, drops on the board. ABC's well, after that. But you know what, though? He's been proven. Wrong. B Draymond does have something left. He's got nothing left. That yeah, was like Draymond the greatest. Had... He said it's so matter of fact. It's one of my right. favorite drops. Can you play it real quick? That drop or we don't have it. It didn't transfer over. The, the Draymond. The, the, he says Draymond's got no, nothing. No, yeah, left. that was old BPA. Oh, we find yeah, it, please. Look for uh, it. But no, like I wouldn't That was right before the championship. I wouldn't let my daughter go to a class taught by Tyler Miller. I wouldn't let her go to a class taught by BPA. <laughs> we'll let her go to a class taught by I'm so upset. Our boy Jason on the chat. Jason, who's always arguing with people. I wouldn't let her go to a class. Let her, yeah, I wouldn't. No, 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 no. But Draymond does have a lot left. But I do wonder, does it matter to anybody if Kamika comes back and starts? Is that like, because he has missed four straight games. And things change quickly with this roster. Bonte, we know that. Bonte, let me just give you a, a quick heads up. When the Warriors lose to the next game, someone will be to blame. And it won't be that the opponent is just better than them. <laughs> so just, just like, let me just, I just want to make sure that we're very clear on this. Someone is to blame. It'll be the plus minus of Looney or Pajemski or, you know, it'll be Clay's shot selection. It, it's always got to be someone's fault. It can never be the other team just played better. So to your point about Kaminga, I, but I also. He's coming back Thursday against Houston. Says, let's, let's call it what it is. Their situation is very delicate, yep. just in general, right? Where they are in the in the year, the roster that they have. And so fitting everything together like a puzzle, it is important. So if Kaminga does come back, and let's say it does look clunky, then, yeah, they're going to have to abort and, and just kind of, like, re rework this thing. But how many different starting lineups have they had? I don't think this is Kaminga exclusive. Like, if Clay missed two games because of an ankle injury and they played really well, or if Steph or whatever, like, we do this all the time. I don't think it's just Kaminga specific, but no, I do not. believe we are going to be looking for all the flaws in Kaminga's game because it does feel like that's yeah. kind of what Warrior fans are doing right now. What matters more to Warrior fans? 888 957 9570. 888-957-9570. What matters more, J.K. starting or finishing? Because I always care about the finishing line. But, Who's but in that was he a lineup? lock to finish? No, he wasn't a lock. Nobody's a lock to That's finish outside saying. of Steph and, like, uh, Steph and Draymond. Like last night, I was like, I kind of want to like, see Moody, but I get where he's going with this. Like, I get where I why he's using this lineup, but, like, Moody did a really good job. I mean, he took a charge in the game, and I thought was playing really well in, in front of Luka. I don't know. Like, it's tough. I think they have a t I mean, you can make arguments on any given night for GP2, Moody, Trace Jackson Davis, uh, 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 Clay Thompson, Wiggins, Steph. Like, there, there's, I don't know, man. There's, there's like nine guys that could, that could conceivably close. 
Does it matter? Does it matter to Warrior fans out there? Because I look at it as a plus. You get Kaminga back. And the great news is the 10 tendonitis is not serious. He'll be back Thursday against the Houston Rockets. As, you know, we talked to Sam Gordon yesterday for the San Francisco Chronicle. Uh, he saw Kaminga warm it up in San Antonio. Look good in San Antonio, warm it up. So he's close. But, dude, like, because personally, I was driving home last night, and I knew it. I was just thinking about it. It's like, you know, there's going to be something. Somebody's going to say something about Kaminga starting or messing up the rhythm if they go to a, get out to a slow start. Does it even matter anymore if he starts or finishes? Does it matter if he starts Jonathan well, what Kaminga? What do you think is better for him? Like, if you want the best version of well, Jonathan Kaminga, what, what, how, what's the role? Well, mentally, it's going to be a growth period for him if he does come off the pitch. Because if he comes off the bench for him, he's going to say, boy, now I don't know when my minutes are going to come. I don't know how many minutes I'm going to play. And all of a sudden, I'm going to be looking at him all over my shoulder again, thinking if I make a mistake, I make it yank from this basketball game. So, and the same thing could happen conversely if he starts. I have a couple of mistakes early on with Draymond Green and Steph Curry and Claire, whoever's starting. I'm going to have to look over my shoulder. But, like again, to me, it doesn't matter. Like Pajewski, right? He's coming off the bench again. He's still got 30 minutes. I almost played 31 minutes last night. Yeah, but I think Pajemski's uh, impact on a game is very different from Kaminga's. Like, if Kaminga's going to have impact, part of his impact for him, for him in particular, is scoring. The ball's in his hands. Right. Not a lot, but but enough. You know, like, And I think him playing alongside Draymond Green is actually a really good thing because he gets a lot of easy dunks uh, playing alongside Draymond. You get a lot of those high-low plays. Him playing alongside Steph, I think he gets a lot of open lane attacking downhill situations. Will he get those exact same looks with CP3? You also don't want to take away from Andrew Wiggins right now. Yeah. Andrew Wiggins got 16 FGAs up. Field goal attempts. He was 8 of 16 and 3 of 5 for the three-point line. So how does it impact Wiggins? How does it impact Moody? Because right now, I think a lot of fans, they're pro Moody. And I get why pro Moody's a professional. But if Kamiga, when Kamiga does come back, and whether or not he starts or finishes... How does it impact can we, Moses Moody? Because you're going to play GP2. Can we, can we put to bed something? What's that? Th- there is a lot of Warrior fans like, Moody should be playing over Clay. Can we acknowledge, like, you might feel that way. They're not going to go that direction. They're, they're not going to sit Clay for Moses Moody. There's just not. Like, they've showed you what they, like, Moody will so, get he'll get his opportunities, and they're going to ride it as long as they think they need to ride it. But when it's closing time, they're going to roll with Clay, and people need to accept that. Not all the time. I think we saw the shift. Really? When they went on that East Coast trip in Brooklyn. When Clay was like, I'm, you know, he was irate about it. But he accepted it. And there's games where he hasn't finished the first half, and there's games where he hasn't finished the fourth quarter. But of recent, just, uh, recently? Well, recently they've had the injuries, right? Yeah, that's we'll what I'm saying. And, he's, and he has played a I lot better. I feel like better. we're coming down the stretch right. here, and I, I don't see them You don't see Curry reverting I, back I, to no, that? No, I don't. Yeah, I don't. Man, and, and, look, Bonte, I, he could easily prove me wrong against the Rockets and do something totally different. I do feel like, you know, when they're at full strength, I, I do think Clay will be out there to close. And I, honestly, yeah. I think it's the right decision look, because he does balance the floor. And he's, Yeah, exactly. I, I, I think the it's the right decision. I've, I've come to accept it as well. But Kamiga could be that guy who's the Abed out in terms of finishing. What? Because Moody is rolling I right now. Do agree Moody, with Moody you, is rolling right now. I just wonder how that's going to affect JK. JK is a pro. I, I think he's going to be fine. But I, but I'm starting to hear from the fan base. Boy, what, what's going to happen when JK comes back? Because they haven't been wholesome yet, and that's what I wanted. We were discussing this yesterday. I said I want to see the Warriors over the last seven games just click as one. We haven't seen them click as one unit yet. There's been up and down. Like they've been one unit. The vibe is better. But everybody has to play well simultaneously. Well, yesterday, I think you can make an argument that the bench salvaged that game. Oh, they did. Right? And and, and just my, my, in my estimation, when Clay and Steph shoot the way that they did yesterday, as great as Draymond was down the stretch and Wiggins, who are two of your starters, I feel like, to me, the bulk of the game was stabilized when you had that late third quarter push. Moody hits the three. You know, CP3 was excellent. Pajemski was excellent. Um that, to me, I, I thought GP two was really good. We haven't really we haven't really touched a lot about the way they've used GP two has been really good. Right. I feel like they've been using him in spurts, not overextending him. And I think you're getting the best version out of him as well right now. But the bench I thought was excellent, and then it allowed them to close the game properly with the appropriate amount of energy left. So maybe, maybe their now, defense has been so much better. They have been better. The Warriors, by the way, they're twenty one and four when they hold opponents to under one hundred ten points this season. So that's the magic number. 
That's the magic number defensively. Warriors have proved a 21-4 this season when holding opponents under 110 points. Is that because they've been playing Trace Jackson more and having that anchor, elite, just a big man who can, I don't know, is or is that just they're playing better in front of people? That and you've been able to take advantage of some situations from other teams. Charlotte got no bucket getters. It's true. Orlando struggles to score. Miami had nobody out there, really. No. But you, you, you take care. It's not about them. It's about what you do, yeah. right? I'm with about the form and to go to St. Warriors. Is the form better? I think yesterday was a step in the right direction. They got back to the form, and which helped them go 14-4 to during the 18-game stretch. So, to me, it's about the form. But just looking at the lineup, And they're here, not fouling as much, too. Fouling. That's another thing. But they fouled. They got called for 18 personal fouls yesterday. But the Mavericks only went to the free throw line 11 Th- times. That's, there you go. Situational, you know. That. So, we can all complain about the referees. Trust me, I'm not a fan of the referees. The things that are going on with Tony Brothers, Scott Foster, to me, makes the league lose credibility when you got guys out there like that doing things that they're doing. Scott Foster and Tony Brothers. And John Goble's no better. I don't think Mark Davis is no better. But just looking at the lineup, maybe J.K. goes right back in and Draymond Green goes back to the small ball five. But now against Dallas, do you want to do that well, when you see him Friday? That's It's funny you mentioned that because I was thinking, like, watching that game last night, I don't think he starts. But I think Kevon Looney against a team like Dallas makes a lot of sense. I'm with you. Like, I'm we were talking you. so much about, like, the matchups and how it's very matchup dependent. I don't love Looney against Anthony Davis in a one game. I, I just mm-hmm. don't. And I know he, he'll get, a, like, a couple of minutes. I actually really like Kevon Looney against Dallas. I don't know why I thought. Well, because Gafford, Daniel Gafford is a big man who's who's solid around the basket. He rebounds. He blocks shots. I remember the last time I didn't believe he had six block shots. Yeah, he's not going to stretch you, though. No doubt. He's not going to stretch the defense. Yes, and I thought that Looney in general stays grounded on, on Luka and on Kyrie and just makes things more difficult. Oh, no, Dub Nation. This is a good. 